as you know, facial fillers are one of the most popular procedures done all around the world. In fact, over 2.7 million facial filler procedures were performed in the USA last year alone. And that number is only climbing. As with any procedures, there is risk. And overall, even though facial fillers are very safe, especially when performed in the hands of board certified plastic surgeons, you know, that have expertise and knowledge of the complex facial anatomy, in rare situations, if a blood vessel is injected with a filler, that can lead to blindness following such a procedure. Although this is rare, this complication is truly devastating and permanent. However, beginning in 2017, the Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery has published several landmark articles on the danger zones of the face and how to inject these areas very, very safely. So we are very, very honored to have a world-renowned plastic surgeon and a wonderful colleague, Dr. Ian Taylor with us today, who is from Australia, and he obviously needs no introduction. His research team has published a phenomenal new research article on the anatomy of the eye. So, Dr. Taylor, welcome. Thank you, Rod. Good. Hey, it's uh, so glad, we're so honored to have you with us, and I know it's late in Australia. So tell us about this study. What did you find in this study that will help all of us as plastic surgeons to prevent blindness? Rod, we were alerted last year for our first case of blindness. And so I went to the books, worked out what was going on, and we found out that patients were not only having problems with injection in the forehead, reducing blindness, mm -hmm. but any other part of the face, particularly in the nose and in the lips, could cause blindness. So we had to try and find out the pathway which could produce this. Secondly, some of these were instant, others were occurring hours or days later, something else was going on. And thirdly, some of these, the injected artery itself, was producing tissue damage. So we set out to look at the blood supply of the skin, the eyeball, and the connections between the two. And so what did you find and what should the public know about this? What we found, Rod, was that if we look at this, it's a little bit like a map of North America. You've got Canada, you've got <laughs> the United States, and you have boundaries between the two. Now, these have anastomotic branches connecting between the two territories not only between Canada and the United States, but between the states within. And these are um, matched by brown uh, anastomotic vessels around the perimeter. Now, these are of two types. First of all, they can be little connections, what we call choke vessels. This produces, allows normal flow between two arteries. Okay. This is a normal event. However, if a filler gets into one of these arteries, it responds by going into spasm, it self-destructs, and that produces the damage. And that can occur in the skin, and it can occur in the eyeball. But there's a second type of anastomosis, what we call true anastomosis, in which the arteries are joined together a bit like my forearms, there's no obstruction to flow, and you've got a freeway that can run, for example, from San Francisco up to Toronto, from the south up to the north, with right. no obstruction whatsoever. And we found some of these in the face. They're occurring near the inner canthus of the eye. They're occurring in the glabella region. They're occurring on the bridge of the nose and in the lip. And therefore, these are spots to watch out for when doing injection. But that's only half the story because we have veins that drain the face as well. Right. And there can be problems in the, on the venous side. And if we look at the venous system, it's a little bit like the arteries. You have got a freeway running down the face. But it, there's a bit of a, a roundabout here where these, the main vein in your forehead, which normally you see standing out in athletes, easy to inject, it then drains on either side of the face. But these veins have no valves. If you obstruct that vein, you can get reverse flow and it can go into the eyeball. And this can be the problem. It can explain some of the late presentations of blindness. Therefore, what do we do? What do we tell our surgeons to avoid? Right. Both on the arterial and the venous side of the circulation to prevent this happening. And I guess the most important thing is education. Whoever's doing the injection, whether it's a surgeon, whether it's his trained nurse, they must know their anatomy. That's the first thing. The second thing, 
they have to be aware of those hotspots that I just mentioned, the, where these possible freeways are occurring. They need to also, they can be warned because nearly every artery in your face has got a nerve running with it. So if they put the needle in and they get a little bit of uh, sensory change, that may alert them that the artery is right beside that spot. And it's quite obvious, if you're injecting and you're running parallel to a vessel, you're very likely to go into it. If you cross it, then you are less likely to go into that vessel, particularly if the needle's moving. Right. Also, the size of the injector. If you're putting a large amount in, for example, popping a, an injection into the nose, running it up the bridge and injecting a whole bolus of, of, of injecting into the area there, it's very likely to produce this problem that we're talking about. So it's the way, the technique of doing the injection is terribly important. Yeah. It's yeah. also important how you position the patient because right. what you don't want is venous hypertension that can cause problems for backflow into the orbit and have problems on the venous side. So for anyone watching who's interested in getting a safe and effective facial filler procedure, please read and learn about the science of safety. And most importantly, as Dr. Taylor mentioned, please find a trusted and experienced board certified physician, preferentially a board certified plastic surgeon in your country to perform this procedure safely. Ask them about the steps and also about the risks and potential other complications, including blindness. And such a great place to start this search, at least in the US, is at plasticsurgery.org. So on behalf of the journal and on all of us in plastic surgery, Dr. Taylor, I wanna thank you for all your tremendous contributions and this upcoming landmark article. I really appreciate your time you spent with us today. Well, Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure, matey.